Welcome back after the break. And we're busy looking at 4.4, discussing urban sprawl. Now, if you look at 1980, you can see that the streets was planned. You know, you can see the roads and the boundaries and the houses being planned and built according to the streets and the gradient and the routes and obviously where the vegetation is. But over the years there's an increase as you can see houses are just being built everywhere. There's no plan. It's not controlled. It doesn't look like a controlled environment. And then if you look at 2020 all of a sudden there's no more trees. It looks completely unplanned. It's, it's like all these settlements are stacked on top of one another. So if we go to the questions quickly and we look at the question, define the term urban sprawl. Now, first of all, the first thing I can say is like an unplanned shapeless expansion of the city. Okay, into the surrounding rural areas. Because what happens is urban growth taking place, the urban area expands, but it's unplanned. Describe the effect of urban sprawl and housing density in the urban settlement. Now, obviously, as you can see over the years, there's an increase in houses, so the density is going to increase. Now, if we quickly look at 4.4.3, give a possible reason why Area A was not used for urban development in 1980. If you quickly look at it. Now, these lines represent your contour lines. And you can see they are quite close to one another. All right. Now, probably because it was a very steep slope. And if you do develop infrastructure on a steep slope, it's more expensive. Okay, so that can be some of our answers. So, and might be because there was a lower population back then. Okay, as you can see, the contour lines represents it was a steep slope. And it was more expensive to develop on steep slopes. And we can also say because of a lower population. in 1980. Now, because of the contour lines, what do you think, which street pattern will be most suitable for area A in diagram 2002? And that will definitely be an irregular street pattern. Why irregular? Because when we looked at our theory bits, when we learned about the theory, we got a grid iron street pattern, we got an irregular planned street pattern, and then we got an unplanned street pattern. And what these irregular patterns do, they kind of help with unplanned developments. And also to avoid Just need to correct my spelling over here. Avoid steep roads. And also to avoid traffic congestion. If you look at question 4.4.5, in a paragraph of approximately eight lines, evaluate the effect that urban sprawl will have on a natural environment. Now, the natural environment is talking about plant and animal life. Now, if you look of the situation in 2002, you can see 
there's basically no trees left in this area because of the urban sprawl movement. So what effect will it have on the natural environment? Obviously quite a few. I'm going to write it in bullet formation, but please remember you need to write it in paragraph formation. Now first of all, the first thing that's going to happen, all these people settling because it's unplanned, they're building houses. What is the first thing they do once they get in open space? Deforestation taking place, removing the plants and trees. And immediately when deforestation is taking place, the habitat of some animals is destroyed. Okay, because the habitat is being destroyed, it's going to have a negative impact on the ecosystem. It's going to write a negative impact. And obviously there's going to be a disruption on the food chain. Now unfortunately it's going to lead to soil erosion as well because of the deforestation. There's going to be less infiltration because it's going to be artificial surfaces in the area such as tar road surfaces, surfaces same with pavements and unfortunately rivers, permanent rivers will be turned into periodic rivers. And lastly, because of an urban settlement, what do people just tend to do? We tend to pollute. So pollution will increase. Not only water pollution, but noise pollution as well as air pollution. If we look at question 4.5, now this is a, it gives us information regarding our different types of crops and how much was produced. Figure 4.5 shows a current trend in our agricultural production and how much we produce in a year in tons. Now if we look at it over there, two sets of information is how much has been produced in tons. Over here we have the different types of agricultural product As you can see, there's maize, soybeans, groundnuts, etc. And this is the land surface area that was planted, if you can see over there. And scary enough, if you look over there, every single year, less are being produced and less land is being used. That might be the case because of incorrect farming methods and because of soil erosion or this might be the case because they experience a drought or flooding. But let's go and find out once we look at it. Now as you can see there's a comparison of the total crop yields. As you can see much more has been produced in 2014 than in 2015 and if you look at the land that's being used, less land was used in 2014 than in 2015. But look at the correlation. More land was used in 2015, but less was produced. Less land was used in 2014, but more was produced. So let's quickly go and find out what the questions expect from us. Now, if you look at it, which crop in South Africa has shown an increase in production since 2014? So let's go and have a look quickly. Where was an increase? The maize has actually dropped. The sunflower has dropped almost by 200,000. The soybeans, there's 948,000 tons and over to a million tons. There you go. Soybeans 
has actually increased. So the correct answer is soybeans. Now, if you look at our next question with the table, name the crop showing the greatest decrease in production. Let's quickly go back. Now, maize has dropped almost by 5 million tons. Sunflower, only 200,000. If we go there, 20,000. Definitely maize, almost by 5 million tons. Okay, that's incredible. That's a lot of maize and, you know, that's staple food for the South African population. So definitely maize. Now, if you look at our next question, state the relationship between crop yields and hectares planted for the period 2014 to 2015. Now, we just looked at it. All of a sudden, in 2015, there was more land being used, but less was yielded than in 2014. So we can say the hectares planted increased but the crop yield decreased. If I go back to this graph if you look over here, more hectares has been planted. So we used more land to plant crops, but less was produced. And in 2004, we planted less, but more was produced on the end of the day. So that's the question that's being asked over there. Give two possible reasons for your answer to question 4.5.4. Now, first, obviously, when you look at South African farming, I'm guessing rainfall. We might have experienced a drought. Is my spelling correctly? Definitely a drought. So, and we've experienced, you can mention El Nino, you've learned about it in grade 11. Now, what we can also say, poor farming methods, monoculture being practiced, plowing down contour lines, poor methods of farming taking place, and we might even say pest and disease. And what we can mention as well, there might have been a shortage of water. Regarding the drought, but shortage of water for irrigation, like we didn't do, there wasn't provision, for instance, building dams or underground water. So that could have been a concern. Now, if you look at question 4.5.5, in the paragraph, approximately for eight lines, suggest measures that can be employed to improve the crop production, to meet the needs of the growing South African population. Now, what we need to do on the end of the day, we need to improve what's being delivered. And how we do it? By using the smallest amount of hectares being planted. So we want a positive ratio, least amount of land and most output. So what can we do to increase our output of crop farming in South Africa? And first of all, what we can mention is better farming methods. Better farming methods. And what we can do as well we might experience a drought, but we need proper availability of water resources. For irrigation purposes. 
irrigation, is to water our crops. Now definitely what we can have as well, now keep in mind water is a very scarce community in South Africa, so we need to have water saving programs. We need to actually obey how can we maximize our minimum water resources. And what we can do, for instance, South Africa is busy building it, the water transfer schemes, Lesotho, the Highlands Water Project is a brilliant example. Now the Lesotho Highlands Mountains is a massive catchment area for rain. What happens, we build a water transfer scheme to deliver water from the Lesotho Mountains all the way to Gauteng because they receive much more rainfall than we do over here in the interior of South Africa. So water transfer schemes is a great solution that we can have. Soil protection, look after our soil. And very importantly, rotational of our crops, rotational croppings. And that prevents soil erosion. And we can also do not prevent contour plowing because that also creates erosion. And what the government can do, they can lend a helping hand with financial assistance. And what we can do, we can have a look at GM crops, genetically modified crops. So that's some of the solutions we can look at to increase our yield every single year. After the break, we're going to continue with 4.6. Stay tuned. We're going to be back right now.